According to U.S. intelligence, Iran could launch an attack on Israeli soil in the next 24 to 48 hours. This comes after Iran promised revenge for an Israeli attack on their consulate in Syria. Speaking to the Wall Street Journal, a U.S. official has said that Israel is bracing for a retaliatory strike, though they suggest they don't believe Tehran has yet made a decision as to where or when this will take place. The United States has issued travel warnings to its citizens in Israel, advising them not to leave major cities. The latest guidance says that government employees in the region could be subject to further travel restrictions at short notice. So how worried should we be about this escalating to a wider regional war? Uh, Well, CBS asked a former Mossad official, an Iran security expert. Is this the most worried you've been? Yeah. I think this is the most worried. I think it's uh, on both sides, in Israel and in Iran. She says if Iran strikes Israel, it could involve missiles and drones similar to the Iranian attack on a Saudi oil facility in 2019. They will try to do it on a military or uh, military uh, asset. The question will be the damage, how many injured people are killed. And uh, I think uh, it has the potential for a huge escalation. However, she stresses that she still believes neither side wants a regional conflict and that will be weighing heavily on Iran's mind. Shine told us that Iran's major dilemma is how to respond in such a way that the conflict does not escalate further. And likewise, Israel, she says, may choose to show restraint and avoid a direct conflict. (laughs) <laughs> Trust a former Mossad to talk about Israel showing restraint. The only reason why Iran feel like they have to respond to this is because the Israelis bombed their embassy in Syria, right? It, that, that's part of their territory. I, I, I don't back that Mossad, uh, former Mossad agent sort of idea that neither side want escalation. I was talking to um, Trita Parsi earlier in the week, very, very smart guy. He said the Israelis want escalation. They want the US to come in and help them take out the Iranian regime. Aaron... Iran are in a very difficult situation here because they do need to, you know, restore deterrence. Israel keeps sort of doing stuff which seems somewhat provocative. They bomb their embassy. If if they don't respond in some way, then Israel will just keep going further. However, if they do respond, then that might give Israel the pretext to sort of blow this into the wider war that it seems like they want. Um, what do you think is going to happen? What would you do if you were a leader of Iran? <laughs> Grand Artsala Pistani. Hey, look, it works on paper, right? I mean, I'm half Iranian. Uh, look, that, 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 neither side wants war. No, I don't think, you know, you can say Israel doesn't want war. They just want to kill and bomb people with impunity, but they don't want war. But they want war, but it's just one way. They want to wage war and not get anything in return. 13 people were killed in that consulate building in Damascus. 13 people, which you've only heard in the last couple of days. Of course, it initially was just the IRGC people, by the way. They had diplomatic credentials, Revolutionary Guard people, including the most senior general, um, military officer rather, for Iran and the Levant. Um, There were other people as well, because because it was a consulate building. 13 people died, but they don't matter. They they don't matter. We We are back to where we've been repeatedly since October, which is that Muslim life is less valuable. That's clearly, just look at how this is being reported. Arab and Iranian life is less important. It must be because 13 people dying is just an afterthought. You know, there was a BBC report earlier today, Michael. You know, Israel is worried about an Iranian attack. Didn't say, well, why would Iran attack Israel? Because this is fine. You can kill 13 people in the consulate. It's fine. No problem. They're Muslim. Okay, do it again. And, you know, the people that on the receiving end, well, they, they can't do anything. How dare they? Don't they believe in the rules-based international system? What's, what's the rule? Israel can do what it likes and nobody else can retaliate? Really? That, that, that's the rule, rules-based international system right now. Collective punishment against civilians, blowing up embassies. Uh, by the way, killing civilian scientists in Iran for many, many years. That's been happening for a very long time. Um, killing aid workers, British aid workers. All of these conventions and, and, and laws being broken repeatedly. But apparently, we have a rules-based international system. It's like, it's Orwellian doublespeak. Like, doesn't mean anything. And this final sort of pièce de résistance in that regard is, is the idea that Israel's worried about being attacked by Iran. Israel's attacking Iran. Like you say, a, an embassy or a consulate is, is sovereign territory. It's a very serious thing what Israel did. And I don't think Britain should be supporting a country which behaves like that. They should not be 
no political support, no military aid, no anything. You do not want to do that. It serves Russia, for instance, for those kinds of norms to collapse. It has not helped Britain, a small country which, broadly speaking, benefits from the international system that we have. We're on the Security Council, things like that. It does not help Britain to all of a sudden say, yeah, you know what? All these conventions and norms, screw them. It's not in our national interest. But again, nobody can say that. Nobody can say that. Why? Well, we, we covered that on the, on the show a while back. Alan Duncan said it. You have conservative friends of Israel, 70% of Tory MPs, Labour friends of Israel, 70 out of 200 Labour MPs. They will not criticize a country which is costing Britain significantly now with regards to political, geopolitical, and potentially military uh, consequences. If there is a regional war, we're going to be involved. You know, for somebody watching this right now who, who's anti migration, what do you think happens if there's a war between Israel and Iran and Iran was nuked? What do you think is going to happen? Millions of people are going to leave that country and come to Europe. What do you think is going to happen? It's crazy. And it's not on the radar of somebody like Farage or, a, or, or somebody on the right who talks about migration on stop. What do you think will happen if you turn Iran into Syria, a country with a population of 90 million people? We have Syrians in this country for a similarish reason, right? Conflict. The mind truly boggles. Um, and time after time, I've asked the question, I never get an answer. The way Israel behaves is not remotely in America's interest. It's not in our interest as Europeans, and yet our politicians side with them and give them carte blanche. When are they going to stop? What's the line going to be? And I, I can guarantee you, Michael, that's also a question that's asked among political circles in, in Tehran. They must be thinking, what on earth are the Europeans and the Americans doing backing this madness? I think you're right on Orwellian double speaking. Let's end this segment with another example. Now, this is really really ridiculous. The US is now seeking diplomatic interventions um, from other countries um, in this standoff. They've asked China and others, including Turkey and Saudi Arabia, to urge Iran to stand down. And the US State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said that, quote, escalation is not in Iran's interest, it's not in the region's interest, and it's not in the world's interest. Now, what's gone on here, right? For six months, the United States has been going to the UN General Assembly, or sorry, the, the UN Security Council, and every time a motion has been put forward to say, we need to call for a ceasefire here before this escalates, they say, do we have any vetoes? The United States, yeah, we're vetoing, yeah, we're vetoing. Um, they're, uh, they're giving all of the arms that are fueling this conflict, and they're backing this country that just bombed someone's consulate, which is something you are not supposed to do in international politics. Now, Iran, as we've said, you know, they're not angels, but they're in a very difficult position here, right? They are the ones being provoked um, in, in this particular standoff. And then the Americans are saying, okay, we're going to give, you know, unparalleled, unconditional support to one belligerent to do whatever the hell they want. Can you guys just restrain your, your guys who haven't really done anything <laughs> yet, right? The Iranians haven't done anything when it comes to this conflict. They say China has to, has to, has to sort of hold back the Iranians, while the US gets to say to its ally, you do whatever the hell you want, we're going to give you absolute cover on the Security Council, and we're going to give you all of the arms you want and all of the arms you need. Right? You, you can't block motions calling for de-escalation for six months, and then when a country sort of feels like it needs to retaliate to restore some kind of deterrence, say, oh, by the way, China, uh, now, oh, we're really in favor of peace now, can you keep your, your Iranian friends under control? Just ridiculous. No one is going to take this seriously. And that is why we are in a dangerous moment, because it does seem like Israel wants to provoke a wider war. Um, the Iranians are in a very difficult position. Do they restore, you know, they, they have to restore deterrence. They don't want to spark a, a, a broader war because, you know, that would be very, very damaging to their country. Um, and then the Chinese are probably just looking and thinking, what the, what the hell do they want from us? Like, thinking of the Americans there. Very worrying, stupid policy from both the United States and the United Kingdom. You know, it's, it's some sanity, please. Some sanity, please. You can't just say, we're going to whip up our guy and you hold back yours. Doesn't make any sense.